Let's make something using baking paper. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. I'm looking at this parchment paper or baking sheet paper, cookie paper, uh, wax paper, anything like deli paper, anything with a, a nice rustle and a crinkle to it. It's semi-translucent and it's just got that nice sort of wax resist feel to it. I'm going to cut some strips. I think I probably want that, I would say that's about five inches. Yes, so let's go with about five inches and as straight as you can see it, just rip roughly. <laughs> OK, let's just work with this one. I've gone wonky, but I don't think it matters. So we're going to do... Ah, oh, now. I think it's just as waxy on both sides, but if you've got paper and it feels more papery on one side and waxy on the other side, you want the wax side to be on the inside. So wax side on the inside, papery side on the outside. But actually this paper feels very... It feels waxy on both sides actually. So I'm just now working out how wide I would like these seed packets. Let's have a look. I just want little ones. So fold it in so you've got an overlap of about half an inch. Obviously, I went a bit wonky. It's quite good that I make some mistakes here so you can see if you do it or that's that. there's a way out of it. There's always a way out of it. So we've gone a little bit thin there, but we've still got about a mm, very scant quarter of an inch there that we could, we could work with. So we have ended up with a little folded tube about that, like that, okay? So I think I could get three out of this. I'm gonna cut off my rough ends so that I can get a better measurement. Right, so that's now... So we're about, we're about there. About 13 inches, let's say, it doesn't matter. So I think we're looking at three and a half inches we want. So I'm just going to cut it about there. It's rough. It's roughly three and a half, but we're aimed for that. I can go a bit more here, actually. So I'll take that one. And I'm going to trim this one down and lose the bit where I went wonky. I will probably use that for something else. So, okay, so now I've got that. Well, that one's a bit long. But I think it's going to be quite nice that they're not all uniform. I think that's the whole plan. These are going to look a little bit more homemade or some have a different variety in them. So these are going to be three seed packets of uh, varying heights. <laughs> okay, just the way it works out. So if you like that look, then, then be mindful of that. Do one longer and then like that. Because when we start putting the folds in at the bottom, they are going to... Um, be even shorter. Stick glue may be okay. Let's have a look. Let's see. Because there's a wax resist to the paper, you might just need to go over a bit more. Well, it's grabbing here, so I think that's quite good. So we just glue them all down. These don't have to be seed packets, they're just sort of little collector's packets, little sample packets, samples for something. It could be samples for fabric. It, well, we don't know. We'll see what they look like in a minute <laughs> and then we'll decide what they are. Or you can choose what they are based on what your theme is in your journal. And if you are enjoying the botanicals, then you could, this is where you collect the specimens or the seeds or where you if you like the sewing aspect of the journaling that we've been doing then this could be fabric swatches little tiny samples we'll have a look okay so those are the backs so we get their back right then 
let's go with the little one first I'm going to come in about half an inch quarter of an inch I don't know what that is it, about that whatever you think that is let me let me measure it if we have to measure it I don't I hate measuring I'm sure you do too right it's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch you can see that okay well whatever that is so about a centimeter I mean I like within measurements for fabric and things like that I like inches inches make sense to me because that's the way I've been taught for sewing um, so before I start talking about any of that let me just tell you so we've got that we have folded it in half and now all I've done is I've just cut down the side there on both sides so we've now got that right then we are going to just cut that one away so this is the back because that's the seam there that's going to be cut away so you do that and you're left with that now you can either cut the corners like that or you can round the corners cut your clip your corners off so you've got a little folded bit there and that is your bag so you are now going to glue glue that last little bit down and fold that over okay so it's very neat and very very thin so that's that one this one's not quite straight so you might find it's easier in the long run to use your guillotine or your trimmer so we just fold it back up again a centimeter or just over a quarter of an inch bend it back and we cut the sides you could use tracing paper you could use vellum you could use glassine paper you could use paper bag anything with a rustle or a scrunch anything fine or delicate a pastry bag um, what else what else might you have you know gift bags maybe even gift paper gift wrap paper um, that thin paper if you've got something a little bit uh, pale I mean anything it could be anything tracing paper well I've said that tissue paper that's another one tissue paper but that might be too fine and you don't want napkin paper because that's too absorbent uh, painter and decorator packaging painter masking paper from the painters where they mask over windows or windscreens or the skirting boards that's ideal but the baking paper there's another another quality about it because it is that sort of wax paper and glue down that bottom part there so we've got two little paper bags I have seen it where you might prefer to do it this way so let's just show everything you make more of a tube of it you pen, you put um, those two creases together like that and pinch the two edges and then just cut them like that and then you can cut away that so you're cutting out a rectangle so you could do that and you're left and you're left with that. that's so another way of doing it I find that I don't always get it right I have then cut into it a bit but I find that that way although it appears to be slightly quicker you you want to have practice because I always find that I could I don't know it's just it's a it's hit and miss for me sometimes I get it right and other times I mess up the side so have a little play if you're doing these mass make that might that might 
um, appeal to you and that's quicker for you because you can just pinch those two together, line up the edges and then cut out the thing. But by the time you've lined it all up, you could have just done the way I did for those two. So I don't think it's any quicker. And I don't think it's any more precise because I then went and cut a little bit there. So I don't know. But I have seen that way being done. Three little bags. These are absolutely perfect for collecting seeds. So if you're collecting some tiny, tiny seeds, it possibly only wants a small packet. So these collectors in the Himalayan mountains would have taken something similar to that and it would have been a wax paper and they would have been able to collect their seeds, put them in there and then they would have folded them up and they would have had a gummed label, so something that they would then have had to have moistened and stuck it over there. And for that, I mean, it might they might even have, you know, really wrapped that over and then over again to protect the seeds inside. Well, the expeditions went to really high high altitudes. They took a they took an explorer's expedition to the Himalayan mountains. So um, they had to come up with all sorts of ways to preserve these seeds and they used to put them in little camera case Kodak tins and then they would solder the lids on so they were completely sealed. So the seeds would have been in something like this, they would have been all wrapped up in their little preserved packet. They perhaps would have been given one of these labels to go with it so it says exactly what was in there. That would have gone into the Kodak case, the camera case. Then they had to pump in CO2 gas. Well, they could get that because there was a lot of places quite readily over in China that were using these gas canisters to um, insert bubbles into fizzy drinks. So they got those and then they pumped the CO2 into the little gas, into the little chambers, the little Kodak camera cases, and they clicked on the tops and then the seeds with the label of what it all was was preserved in this in, without moisture or the oxygen or any of that and then they were in their sealed container and that is how they got the seeds back they were then posted back and they had because they had to go through tropics the tropical conditions himalayan seeds if they were exposed to the um elements in such a way they were going to perish and so they wouldn't have been able to grow. So when our botanist, Arthur Bully, received his um, little seed packets coming back, oh, very exciting, he had funded an expedition to Mount Everest and there was a whole team of them that had gone out there tasked to find all the alpines that they could, anything different. Some of them were going for other reasons as well, for other collectors. And um, and that was fine because they'd worked out that, uh, that uh, they were going to get sponsors and it wasn't just Arthur footing the bill. It, it, it used to be, but then they put a stop to that. So Arthur was... Um, one of a syndicate and they were all funding the expedition to to Mount Everest. Well, when they got there, the seeds were collected and they were sent back. Very exciting. So there he is in his greenhouse with his head gardener and they are, you know, they're carefully opening up the little packets and they're reaching in and they're, you know, they're putting it all probably very, very professionally, very scientifically onto little cards and papers and they're tipping them out and then they're going through it and they're separating out all the seeds you know, this sort of business and then they are setting about to propagate them and grow them well he got two packets he got one of one variety and he got one of a completely different variety both from exactly the same spot the same region and the same part of the mountain this one grew it grew like um, uh, he wrote that it grew like turf so it grew like um, grass seed like weeds that one was fine this one from exactly the same area 
nothing. He got nothing. And this was the very special little beautiful alpine flowers that he was hoping for. And they didn't grow. And he'd spent all that money and these men had had to climb up to Mount Everest only to come back with dud seeds and the seeds had perished in the post they died because they had got so hot and they hadn't been stored properly in these little chambers well they had had the instruction on how to do it and these ones had grown very well but the other ones didn't so Arthur was so disappointed because it was so much money to get them to go out and of course they'd all packed up come home expedition was a success as far as they were concerned everybody came home cheering and patting each other on the back that was great well done you've got um, George Forrest who was who was the the explorer he was dubbed Indiana Jones they even joked about it from the stories and um Really, there wants to be a film about this because it is quite fun. Anyway, so they did the expedition and they came home and then the seeds didn't grow. And that was so disappointing because those were the very special ones that uh, were needed. So <laughs> they had to set about funding a second expedition and they had to go again. They got sent back, all of them. <laughs> with instructions and he wrote them down again and they all had training who <laughs> got very annoyed not annoyed but well wouldn't you be if you just funded all this massive um expedition to get people to climb the Him Himalaya <laughs> climb Mount Everest only to find that the product they brought back was 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 duff nothing growing no good at all so yeah they had to go back out again and had of a second expedition, but it worked out because they found other things they hadn't found on the first one. And so that was bountiful. They came back with lots of different varieties and it paid. He, he, you know, he made his money back because it paid to send them the second time. So the second time they were a bit more thorough and they were experienced. So climbing in that high altitude was very, very different. I think the second time round, you're definitely going to have learnt and you are going to uh, have packed accordingly for this, this freezing cold. And the light-headed, um, low oxygen of the high altitude of the mountain uh yeah so that that's um what i've been learning about very interesting very very fun to now just be thinking right where we're making these pockets nothing new not a new idea of course but now we can think well these might have housed mountain seeds from the Mount Everest, the Himalayan mountain range in China, being brought back with all sorts of exciting things. So we could make them into um, scientific, and we could we could make them into scientific um, little pockets, and we could use Tracy Fox's labels. So let's just have a look and see if I like that. In which case, I might want to then take my artistic license and put some flowers on there as well. I think they're going to be quite sweet, aren't they? So we'll just we'll just do a little variety. And then I think we probably want some more for fabric swatches. But I've come, I've just since sitting here and chatting, I've come up with something slightly nicer for that. So I'm going to allow that idea to percolate over the week and we'll come up with something really cool for fabric swatches and um, that's another part of the story because Arthur's wife Harriet used to like to accompany him to his trips to Europe particularly France mainly because well because France was exciting and vibrant it's uh, fashionable and um, lots going on there was the fact that it was a simpler traveling destination it was quicker to get to so it wasn't quite so arduous and um, yeah there was lots of things that she would have liked to have seen and done when they were over there and of course Arthur's sen sen 
Arthur was a cotton merchant and he would have been using contacts over there to uh, sell his cotton where to to France and um, and trade because they would have had linens and nice things as well. So cotton comes from the cotton plant and linen comes from flax. It's two different plants. Well, it's another bit of botany that um, Arthur would have would have uh, known all about and had to have learnt very early on from his father, which may be why he gets so intrigued by plants. Right, I've got a bit of a problem here because this doesn't seem to want to stick to this wax paper. Let's just rest that on there like that. I'm going to do this one as well. Uh, but before I do those, I might just think about some other stickers. Ended up. Oh, yes, so I could, it could be that they do a little bit of artwork. Oh, I like that. And then they and use some of these that uh, we've, we've been doing. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's get the right one. Well, you would, you would want to read it, wouldn't you? Well, that could even be a little um, tuck, couldn't it, on there? That's an idea. I've stuck that one down now. Or have I? Nope. The, these are the stamped images that we painted for the uh, coffee pot challenge the other day. Link to that is in the playlist. So we've got our three tickets and I'm just having a little look and I think these are quite good to use what we've already made. And we could use the little labels that we already made as well and just have some words on there like seeds. So now I've got such a small one, I think... Um, that might be too small and um, I've got some stamped images here and I've painted them so I'm just going to find my scissors and I'm going to cut that out let's cut that one out and then we can work out I just want something that's going to go on there because that's too tall, so that one I'll have to go somewhere else another time. So fussy cutting these out, so if you've been making these, this is one of the first uh, uses that I'm applying them to, but they go will go on the page, they go everywhere. These are just a really nice um, alternative to washi tape stickers or any kind of stickers you're using up stamps so if you've got your stamps and a lot of them and maybe you're just getting a bit bored with your stamps this is just another way to revive them into using them for your theme instead of just stamping them onto the piece of paper where you think they want to go you're stamping them onto a really different fun background perhaps a paper that you didn't want to put in your journal a scrap bit a rip bit um, anything interesting a texturized piece of paper would look great anything that would take a stamp basically and then you can um cut it out like that well you might have embossed it you know it just brings back all of that pastime that you may may not uh, do uh, for one reason or another and maybe that will re reignite your intrigue with your stamps actually this one just wants a smaller ticket or tag like that so I think um I'll just go oh maybe maybe that Maybe that, we can't really read it, so that's fine. <laughs> and we'll save that one. These larger ones can take it, so that's okay. So, that's my little layout. I think I'm going to want a silicone glue here, so I shall use whatever's in this bottle, which... Ooh, this is the um, Kalau glue. It's a slightly stronger than the stick glue. So if you've got a PVA glue, a white school Elmer's glue, something like that, that will that will do, I would think. Um, but this is what I'm using here. So just something a little bit stronger than stick glue if you're working on a wax paper. Oh, 
All right, so I'm going to put this one here. Let's do all my labels. So how are you all? Are you having a nice weekend? Um, I think that these are some fun ideas that you can take forward into most journals. And it's quick and it's simple. And you can make your own labels. So we did make our own just by cutting strips of paper and I'll just show you quickly how to do that as well. If you've got a bit of paper that's maybe a bit aged and um, you've got or some tea stained paper what you can do what you can do and if you've got a corner rounder and a scrap of paper you just round your corners like that and that gives you a little instant label and then from there you can go through your word stamps and you can either write with nice a pen I'm just, I'm just going to see which side is nice. I actually think I prefer that side. You can either write with a nice pen uh, the word that you want to have on there. All right. And then, whoops, leave that to dry. Let's go with a brown. A little bit of um, frayed burlap, but really I wanted vintage photo. And then I'm going to just uh, just go round and emphasise the bits that uh, like that. Okay, there we go. So that's that's another way. Might have been nicer in capital letters in hindsight, but you know that could go on there. So now I'm just going to glue down the images here. So Harriet loves to go over to France because of all the reasons and she probably can get things that she can't get in Liverpool um, because they would have been visiting um, Paris and places like that to where all the big businesses were for the purpose of to go to the seed banks and all the botanical reasons that they had over there to go. They would have been going to look at the cottons and look at the lace and the linens in the shops in Paris. They would also be visiting the seed banks and they would be conversing with people over there to sell their seeds and bring their seeds to the people in in their seed packets um, but mainly what they would be doing is to swap seeds or certainly uh, gain seeds and be allowed to take seeds back uh, so they would be buying seeds they'd be buying seeds they'd be selling cotton and they'd be going for a nice time as well and um, they didn't speak French so that was often difficult so they did get their children um, well schooled in learning the languages so that they would have been able to be more helpful in the future so that's what they did their son and daughter learnt German and they learnt French and they had a German governess and the daughter was absolutely fluent and, and even when she was older she had a German accent because she'd been brought up by her German governess but it was all over in where they lived so uh, that's wonderful very clever very useful very enterprising family uh, but we know that Harriet is a very much a social butterfly she loves people Loves to be around people, loves to be a part of things and would have probably been a little bit intrigued by the fashion over in France, which of course would have been possible to go and see. 
and and be part of their trip over there certainly for the nice fabrics and lace that she would then be able to bring back so yeah we can bring all of that into the story and you certainly can as well if you're following along there's plenty here there's so much here in this story so we've got lace we've got linens we've got cottons we've got all the all the trinkets and things that you would find over in Paris you've got special um, applications of creams and um, so face creams and hand creams and preparations using plants they would have been interested in that as well definitely uh, what what herbs could make um, salves and lotions and potions and perfumes obviously over in France it was a, all the all the perfumery those interesting things that we still find beneficial today Right, so that those are my little basic seed packets. I'm really pleased with those, so we can work out what to put in them. Um, well, maybe they're great for housing these labels. Um, so if you are thinking of a nice little happy mail idea, you might want to make your own labels or make, make them something, or certainly cut out some little stamps and things, or you could put in uh, scraps of fabric, and the other thing that they definitely would have been f intrigued by would be stamps. And that is another little thing that you can put in these pockets, even though you've got the seeds on there. That's just a really sweet way of storing a few stamps and things. So these little collector pockets are very, very straightforward to make. So we could have a collection of them on a page like that and then each one could be opened and you could get the, the items out that's one idea or we put a little tuck spot there and you then be able to find them so the other day I suggested I'd quite like that to go there and be hinged in I, I, I am still okay with that idea and for that I think I might you know I might have my seed packets tucked in there. So I've got my washi tape I'm just putting some extra glue on there for extra strength of stickness because I just don't um, trust some of these washi tapes they are very low tack that is their design and um, we'll just leave that there for two moments right I'm just lining up my page where I want to have it and then I'm going to stick the tape down and try and get that as straight as we can and now we've got this fun fold up so it is vintage paper but what's nice is that you can bend it back round and then there's writing space there you'll be able to still right on there so it's hidden secret paper that folds in like that and then what we could do because this is writing paper as well but it might be nice to um, have these seed packets peeping through like that and for that I think we're going to want a separate little belly band tuck okay so I have a collection of strips from um, things that I've cut off and I'm just going to take something from a bygone project and use that as my idea. So I'm going to bring that in. So this is just copy paper, it's a coffee dyed and it's got some botanical images on it already. It is just a copy weight paper so I'm not sure if that's going to be strong enough. Two off cuts that's a bit that's a bit thicker now so that's great and then just ink around the edges I've changed my mind I'm going to glue all the way down there because those seed packets are a bit slippery and I think they'd be better anchored in and not poking out the other side because I'm pretty sure I'll lose them so I'm now doing a side tuck that's better that's more secure 
So this one's going to have some images being put in there, stamps in it. And then this one um, we could put in, um, has a couple of buttons or something in it from her travels because maybe she's reusing the old seed packet. So there's that as well. So maybe she's found a couple of these lovely buttons in Paris that, uh, you know, are very special and she wants to sew them on something. So that's where she's just using that. So there, there's lots of ideas. It's just, that's that's just that one. And then we might. I mean, I would like to decorate something on there that will then peep through. So that's another that's another time. But those are the seed packets and a little side tuck. Something that you can do, uh, no cost, very easy. Make your own label. Make your own stamp embellishments and. Have fun with just putting something together as simple as that. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had fun here with me today and uh, hearing all about my little stories. Next time you walk past a flower display, just have a little think. Which one came from the region of Mount Everest? OK, thank you very much for watching. And above everything else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.